Hello everyone, I am Man of Interest, and it's time for This Week in Keyboards Live. Yes, it's live this week, because I've been a little busy, so no prepared episode, except for you guys watching the VOD where this may be edited slightly. But for those of you who are live, thank you so much for joining me. This episode of This Week in Keyboards was sponsored by... Zeal PC. Zeal PC is currently running a sale for the Telios, Zilios, Xylans, and Helios for 20% off the switches. Consider using my promo code zealpc.net slash man of interest, my affiliate link, I mean, uh, where I get a small kickback for every purchase you make on the site. So if you've ever wanted to get into the Zilios hype, now it's the perfect time to do so. And if you order over $150, your purchase will have free shipping for US and Canada. Otherwise, you'll need over $200 for your purchase to get free shipping worldwide with $300 for Russia. Zia will be currently out of the country for Computex and Keycon, so you're going to have to wait till June 2nd for your orders to go out. But once they do, that fast two-day DHL shipping. And now we must do the news first up on this week in keyboards is not that tab the new dss keycaps from pimp my keyboards well the quote new unquote in reality these are a recommissioning of the old DSS tooling that was available in the early 80s. So it was essentially a sculpted DSA profile. Um, medium height, the height of the keycaps actually sits just between DSA and SA keycaps. They were never as popular as the bigger or younger brother as middle siblings often are, but it's 2019 and maybe 2019 is the time to give love to the middle sibling. So PMK, Sandra Plastics, has decided to revive DSS. Just like everything on PMK's website, when you look through, there are a million options for different kits. And all these will be available on Wednesday, the 29th, coming up pretty soon. So... Something pretty interesting about this is getting a alpha kit and a TKL kit will be about $110 before shipping. Hmm, that's a, it's definitely going to be quite a bit. Where is my news doc? Here we go. So personally, I'm just going to get it to get it to try it out you know they have recommissioned the tooling but i'm a bit worried about how some of the keycaps may look for example if you look at this picture on screen you look at that control that c is a bit far from the trl if you know what i'm saying like that's a that's an odd kerning gap i'm not sure if that got fixed but these do look like i mean these are the real keycaps i'm not sure if they'd fix the tooling between this picture and releasing them but that's definitely a worry and i feel like other issues may persist uh in this keycap set in that regard hmm i think they did a very safe option by going with uh the granite colorway but i think overall for a lot of people they're just going to get it to try out the profile because there's still a lot of inconsistencies like for example look at the c and caps lock versus the c and control those are two different c's the spacing for that control 1.5 is still odd and if you really want to nitpick at the legends you can find a lot of issues like that with this set and even though a lot of them are very small things because you can find them so easily and they're feels like they add up they really chips away at the desire of this set which is definitely a bit unfortunate but there's some cool things so fun facts uh the name dss comes from three things din standard with that's the d and then spherical touch 
and then sculpted key family so for you guys want to know where dss comes from and dsa is similar dsa is also meets the german din standard it's also spherical um and i forgot what the a is something that involves not being sculpted uh, one last Huey complaint is 7U Spacebar should be included with the Pro Modifier Kit in the future and not on its own separate kit because I'm pretty sure there are going to be people who are going to order the Alphas, the Modifiers, and the Pro Modifiers and totally forget about that 7U Spacebar for whatever awesome board they want to put it on. Overall, I mean, even though I sound pretty negative about that, I'm just happy there's another option on the marketplace and I hope that with either popularity or funding from a vendor they can work on the issues with the legends and this can be improved to be better and better one thing we don't have is any pictures of the underside of the keycap so we don't know how thin or thick these will be so gonna have to just take a leap of faith on wednesday speaking of leaps of faith let's head on to our uh, our next topic which for many is going to be a pretty big leap of faith. Um, our next one is going to be the Everglide switches over on Drop. Over on Drop, these are some new switches that they have um, in linear and tactile varieties. So an interesting thing about the switches is we don't know like the branding. They're kind of like basically unbranded, as you guys can see here. So it's kind of like a unknown eh. so these switches are 35 for a pack of 70 and the price goes up of course to 45 for 110 available in amber orange coral red jade green and sakura pink so the weights the pink linears 35 gram initial force with 45 gram actuation so your red clone you got your tactile that's like your brown clone you got a slightly heavier uh, red switch the coral coral red um, 50 gram initial 67 gram actuation and then we got the ambers with also a 45 gram initial but uh, and a 55 gram actuation mirroring the jade green except it's linear instead of tactile so all these are shipping in july pretty soon um, so either they've been working on these switches for a long time and hasn't told anyone or there's some other thing about these switches we don't know so what i'm going to say next is speculative speculative because i have no definitive answers yet but around the rumor mill whispers are that this may or may not be the same factory that way recently broke connections to because of um, their involvement in making fake zelios and telios switches I cannot confirm or deny that statement, and right now we do not know that either. So, who knows? Drop has had an issue, not an issue, but a reputation of buying and reselling gray market products in the past for audio, their audio products and some of their knife products, but that might not be them now. But regardless, these switches are an okay price for the amount you get, I guess-ish. It's like 50 cents per switch at 70, not counting shipping. And it doesn't go down under 50 cents once you get to 110. I wish we had force curve graphs. I wish we had any kind of information. Um, I think that's the, one of the big unfortunate unknowns. And... That's that's the only unknown thing. So, if you want to take a chance on them, you can go check them out at Drop. But, eh, we will see. Speaking of things you can take a chance on, let's move to our next topic, which is by Key Coat, a powder coat service um, for keyboards in our community. So, are you going to take a chance on this? Maybe, maybe not. Key coat cannot guarantee your board will fit the same way it did before. Powder coating is their disclaimer because, of course, it's thicker than anodization. But it's interesting. A lot of people in the community recently have been wanting to play with the idea of different finishes for keyboards. Whether it's Cerakote, whether it's um, powder coating, 
it's something that people want to try out with, and I think it's interesting that people are finally exploring these options. So, powder coating. Will it catch on? Won't it catch on? We'll have to see. I'm a bit curious on how it's going to be. So, if you want to do it, you fill out a form. It's going to cost approximately, like, $125-ish dollars. Um, and that's not counting shipping, so you need to ship both ways to the powder coat service and back as well. But overall, you're going to be spending between like 125 ish not counting shipping, for that finish. For many, that may seem a lot, but in terms of like, you do it for the looks, and people spend that much for like keycaps, and that affects the looks. It's not too crazy. But I do hope that the price will go down in the future as volume picks up. We will have to see. So check out these awesome folks. I don't know how many of them. But check out Keycoat when you get a chance if you're interested in getting your keyboard powder coated. So, hmm. Hmm, indeed. Uh, something that makes me go really, uh, hmm, is uh, our next topic, which I think is, um, Odd? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say odd. It's the interest check for the 1800 Mini by Zixi. Uh, this interest check though is being uh, posted by Old Cat on behalf of Zixi. This will be the round two of the Mini 1800 Mini with an RGB dual mode PCB. And I asked, what is a dual mode PCB? A dual mode PCB just means it has Bluetooth and wired connection. So as you can see, it's an 1800 inspired board, but the core of the board is a uh, is basically like a 40 percent and then they added some keys on top and the arrows staggered out and of course the mini numpad which I guess is now more of a macro pad the bottom looks pretty cool with all these um with all these uh, acrylic bits and that bottom is pretty clean looking USB-C and it looks like a dip switch for turning Bluetooth on and off. What do you guys think about this board? I think I think it's unique. I think it's cute and fun. Um, I also agree with Titan where it's not going to be for me. But I think that it's great that this exists. Absolutely great that this exists. Um, yay. Yay indeed. Overall, if I had to nitpick a little bit, because I can nitpick a little bit, is I would have to say that, where is it? I'm not completely, I like the bottom, I'm not completely sure about it. I think there should be less roundness to these cutouts, and it should be more um, blocky. Sorry, sneeze, allergies. That's life. Overall, concept's cool. Not my kind of thing, but it'll work for a lot of people. Speaking of working with a lot of people, um, a lot of people are able to work because they have coffee. And if you ever wanted coffee to enter your keyboard life as much as it enters your real life, you can check out... GMK Cafe by Langedlandia. So, colors CR, RAL8019, and N9. Got some renders here for people who may be curious about this set. This is a coffee inspired set with a dark roast of a rich coffee, not the stereotypical light brown creaminess, but a much darker kind. I think it looks alright. I think it looks alright. Um, would I get it? Uh, is what I'm going to say. Um, Jeff, thank you for that tier 1 sub. And you say, gray coffee feels weird, man. I mean, man, my coffee isn't gray either. It's like a, either a black, like the dark, so dark of a brown it looks black, but it's still a dark brown. Um, yeah. I guess people are liking that splitting of the numpad. Um, I've said it in the past. We're like, hey, you split the numpad, add ISO. Bam. So, 
So, uh, I think it has potential. I don't think this is how it should have turned out, though. Will I get it? No, I probably won't get it. But, you know what? Not bad based on those renders. Got a good amount of sets here, which I think a lot of people are going to enjoy. So, yeah, it's going to be run by Cannon Keys uh, coming up. So, congratulations for to Langlandia for securing a vendor, and so most likely securing its existence. Yay. Next up in the news is something that was only going on for another 20 hours, 55 minutes, and 35 seconds. What might this be, you ask? Of course, it's the sale for the Clipe 2019 by Mechanisk. The Clipe is a tray mount 60% available in a plethora of colors um, with a new USB hole to accommodate USB mini and C and a nice little logo on the back. A nice little nature detail on the back. So, Mechanist claims it's probably the best 60% case you can get 60% tray mount case you can get for $120. I'm not sure if that's the truth, but I know a lot of people have this board, have this case, and a lot of people very much enjoy it. And if you want to join in on that level of enjoyment, you have 20 hours remaining. So, it's it's going to order it. Um, probably will come sooner than later. Just check it out when you get a chance. The Clipe 2019. Over on Mechanisk. Speaking of something that you should check out, I think you should check out this next topic. I think it's interesting because it uses a word I don't think is used correctly. This next topic is the 651 keyboard, a minimalist 65%, which, uh, this is interesting. Because when I think of a minimalist board, I'm not thinking a lot of bezel. If anything, I feel like a bezel is like to maximize a board as opposed to minimize a board, which is the idea of having a minimalist board. Um, I, I hope I'm not the only one who thinks that. But I still think the board actually looks pretty nice. It's like if you had the M65A, it could have went in two directions. It could it could have been the new um, what's it called? The one that Rama did. I totally forgot. I'm sorry, Rama. That way, or it could have gone like this way. You know what I mean? Like the M65A, it's like it 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 branched out in two directions. Rama took it back to his direction, the Koyu, um, the Koyu. Let's just. Yes, I think it's the Koyu. Um, and then this is Iron's like, I like that. I feel like it should go this way. And that's the 651 is how I feel about it. Um, it's based on Scandinavian modern movement of design. I don't know what that means, but essentially it's supposed to emphasize a minimalism and simplicity combined with functionalism and aesthetic. Not sure how functional minimalism it leads to bigger bezels, but I still think it's a good looking board. I don't think like you should call it a minimalist board, but like I like the sides. I like the thick bezel, the how thick they made it where it's not too thick. I like these I, I like that corner radius, right? I like that. That's super smooth, super nice. Like there's a lot of things of this board that I really like. And I think it's pretty cool. So I think it's gonna be a pretty big hit for quite a lot of people. Who are interested in it? Uh, there's gonna be a brass PVD um, bottom, an internal weight. It's gonna be cool. It's gonna be nice top mounted assembly. So, based on this picture, I think there's gonna be a little bit of worries, which is like there could be a good amount of space internally between the bottom of the PCB and the bottom of the inner plates. Um, but hey, that's what sorbethane is for. You know what I'm saying? That's what sorbethane is for. All these assembly pictures, though, are absolutely 
A plus, and I think it has some decent potential. I think I think it might go well depending on the overall price. So I'm looking forward to it. I think if you liked the M65A but you didn't like what Rama did in turning into the Koyu, maybe the 651 is the better option. If you're interested, give your interest to uh, Spooknik when you get a chance. So our next topic, also posted by Old Cat on behalf of someone else, is the ARC 60. It's a Gaska TKL by Gray Studio, the same Gray Studio behind the HB85 and the same studio behind the COD67 and others. So what are we getting with this? Key features, number one, right off the top of the bat, a gas mounts, a dual mode PCB, meaning USB-C, Bluetooth, full R R's, G's, and B's, 6063 aluminum, $350, first come, first serve, and this is what it looks like. Hmm, I think a lot of people are going to be really hit or miss about that top badge on the right and that top little swing kind of accents that has depth to it on the top. I know, as has been said, you can get a blank badge. I know a lot of people are like, is this essentially a TKL canoe with that top fin? And I'm going to say no, but that's based on you. Another thing that some people may disagree with is that bottom bezel length. But I think it's fine because it kind of gives a little bit of balance to the top that has so much extra going on. So, we get gaskets on the sides and on the bottom and on the top. So, it looks like overall people want more gasket. And Gray Studio has caught on this trend. They're like, okay, we're going to give you a gasket. $350 overall isn't too bad. Plus shipping, you're probably looking at like $410, $420. Um, yeah. And it has Bluetooth. People like Bluetooth, I think. I mean, I don't, but people do. So, if you're looking for a, a nicer Bluetooth keyboard than the one you probably have, uh, this is probably a nicer one. So, check this out. Arc 80 by Demo Studio and Air Potter of Gray Studio. Yeah. Okay, this next topic is something that catches my fancy. It kind of catches my fancy quite a bit. It's the bumper. A 60% keyboard case interchecked by John at Zap. John at Zap. Um, I think the first picture already kind of gives you like what this case is about. That cur th them curves, those sides, like the bumper, like the front and back really reminded me of like an older IBM board, right? Having that smooth front, that smooth back, the flippers. It's a, uh, it has a lot going on. And I think a lot of people are going to be kind of looking forward to this. That's a pretty recessed USB hole, um, interchangeable flippers on the side, two little tiny screws, very, very nice. It is a tray mount. I'm hoping that we can get these made without these center posts. Um, yeah, and it can glow. So, it's like an old IBM board. I really like the fact you can change out those sides. I think it'd be really cool to have like wood inserts for the sides, but like not like actual wood, but like, you know, like in the 80s wood panel, how it has like that really, really cheap looking like wood paneling that you've seen like bad offices in the 80s, 70s and 80s. I want that. Like that, that, that arcade wood veneer wood paneling kind of like slapped on in the sides. I think for I think for me that would be like the ultimate aesthetic I'd want to go for for this board, like black or white, and then have like like cheesy wood paneling for those flippers. I'm ex I'm I'm pretty excited for this. Um, curious to see how overall how it's gonna end up. Seventy degree angle CNC polycarb or aluminum, and this is one of the cases where I'm definitely wanting this to be aluminum more than polycarbonates, um, especially that the coating is gonna be Cerakotes. Like, the coating is just a Cerakote, not even listing possible powder coat or listing anodization. No, 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 no. Free going Cerakote. So, 
pretty good. Emakuzumi 50 price around $200 looks like. Um, it's going to be running early summer. So summertime, bumper time. I'll probably be in it to win it if I already haven't spent my money on Anime Expo or the Seattle Meetup. So join that zap. Good job. I like this. I am I am interested if you want to check that off. Speaking of something that got uh, checked off pretty quickly by a lot of people is our next topic. So this next one, um, it, it kind of came and went in like a moment. It's the group buy for the Rukia by Jax Static. So what is the Rukia? The Rukia is a polycarbonate alice essentially right it's an alice form factor in a plastic case polycarbonate brass weight case and plate are compatible with the original alice the usb cutout supports c and mini so awesome it was first come first serve 50 spots so if it's alice related you know your boy had to grab a spot so i'll be a cool build coming up yeah all the spots went out in under an hour, if I remember correctly. It went pretty quickly. Um, so really happy that this worked out for Jax. So, ooh, it worked out pretty well. They were a bit pricey, to be honest. Um, let's see if he listed their price here. No, he did not. Here it is, $390 for the kit. And the $390 kit includes the case, PCB, plate, PVD, brass weight, screws, and bump bonds. That's not counting shipping. Shipping is still going to be charged once the boards are in hand. So, yeah. Quite a few of these were privately distributed for the group buy. But, I mean, that's the group buy runner's prerogative and their decision to do so. So, after shipping, we're probably looking at, eh, it's polycarbonate with a brass weight. And it's a decent sized box, but not too big. Maybe like 430, 440. It would be my guess for the total shipping. Probably not more than 440. Um, at least for people in the US. So, I know a lot of people miss this, but I think this is going to be a good teaser to what's going up next. If those of you may not know, Jax is the same person who's been working on the UHMW keyboards, which is a kind of plastic material that's very unique to the community, and want to try to work on a TKL with this material as well as an Alice with this material, but want to start off with polycarbonate to get, you know, his handle on logistics, which I think is an A plus option. Speaking of A-plus options, if you are an ortholinear user, you may be wondering, Huey, what's the A-plus option for keycap sets? Well, I'm going to be honest and say there's probably none because you're using ortholinear. But if you have to choose one soon, then maybe this next topic will be good for you, which is the group buy for SA Fluffy Clouds over on Novel Keys. Um, SA Fluffy Clouds, or I like to refer to it as... GMK Cyan in SA form, because isn't it just GMK Cyan in SA form? Uh, is going to be $70 for the ortho base and $45 for the ergo base add on, which is good for people who want to cover an ergodox or XT75. So, what's the point of this set? Do you use an ortho board, plank, shark PCB, insert? One of dozens of 40% boards. Maybe this is the set you want to get next. Keycap set is going to be manufactured by Signature Plastics using the WFK and BBQ colorways. I love the fact that one of their color codes is called BBQ. Um, but a lot of people want this. And I think there's a strength of having a dedicated set for this as opposed to having a child set for other sets for example we have a gmk set and you're like oh well i want to use this gmk set on my 40 percent or my plank or whatever right you're getting that base kit for like 100 110 up to 120 right then you're probably getting like some kind of ortho kit for an additional 45 to 55 dollars so you're already up to a lot of keys over half of them you're not going to use and while you do get you know you are paying the extra to get that to use it on that board 
something like this being much more targeted is more convenient for a lot of people who like are on board with this lifestyle already and i'm happy that it exists for them it's not my lifestyle i wouldn't really want to you know roll like this but good on them running it through novel keys speaking of novel keys if you guys want to join non-group by stuff you can use my uh promo code for this month spring springs even though it's going to change on saturday hashtag self shell um you know fluffy clouds is really nice though and i like fluffy clouds it's like when you have good weather you got nice fluffy clouds in the blue sky and some of the best things to have when it's a nice beautiful summer day is froyo and that takes us to our next topic GMK Froyo interest check by the Royal. So, we're looking for some Froyo action. Then, this could be the set for you. Could be the set for you. So, I think there may be some issues with the contrast on some of the colored mods on the keycap colors. But overall, I like the theme and idea of this set. I do. Um... I just worry a little bit like that total and toppings key is a bit hard to read as well as maybe the add key. So, but those keys really give me a, a dip and dots theme. I know dip and dots aren't, um, aren't Froyo. They're just, you know, the, sci the scientific future of dessert treats, but uh, Froyo is pretty good too. Um, so I... I like these. I like all the text novelties. I think it's going to go well. I hope it goes well. I want it to go well. Um, some of these renders do make the uh, the ones I said were a bit hard to read a bit easier. This going to be a Rama key, of course, because all the cool kids have to get Rama keys these days. So yeah, GMK Froyo, renders by Young Lad. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm a bit curious on who's going to end up running it. I don't think they've announced a vendor yet. Looks like it's a possible epbt manufacturing um according to one of the uh notes here which is weird because why would you call it gmk froyo when you're waiting for way to respond to an inquiry about the possibility of epbt manufacturing this i don't know i don't know indeed of course if that doesn't go through then this person will still need to find a vendor, which I guess is getting a bit harder today with how busy the popular vendors are getting. You know, funny enough, I speaking of uh, Dippin' Dots as the future of, of ice cream treats and of dessert treats as well. So instead of Froyo, if you want some kind of Dippin' Dot action, then maybe Beep has the set with you with his next interest check. Beep has been pretty prolific and worked on a lot of sets but this next one is gmk dots for those who like simple colored dots the group by is being planned to run on the first of july and it's going to feature uh, a lot of dots I like dots then dots it's got it's got a lot of dots heck you even got sculpted dots um, I like the idea of the uh, dot stretching on the modifier keys. So, it's going to be running at novel keys. What do you guys think about the set? I don't know what to think about the set. It's just dots. It's just dots. So, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. This is dank. I think it's going to be really hit or miss. Because it's just like, it's like... An alternate form of it's like blank keycaps without actually being blank. I think you know what I mean, right? The symbols don't actually symbolize anything, some of them are colored, but essentially, aside from that, they don't actually signify anything. So they're just dots, dot, dot, dots. So if you're interested, you know it's gonna be running on novel keys. And will it do well? I think it actually will do well, if I'm perfectly honest with you all. I think it's unique enough. Um, double shot dots. Can you imagine? Double shot dots. Double shot dots is going to be a thing. 
And you can check it out on Novel Keys when it goes live. Oakley Doakley. Let's move on to our next group buy by Klee. And it's for the Aluminum and Polycarbonate IMK Corn Helidox cases. And the group buy is now live. They look pretty nice. You know, if I was... If I wanted to use a weird or funky ortho split kind of board and I wanted to look nice, I mean, I think these are like the cases to go with, right? You got a little screen going on. You got a nice little acrylic cover for it. Uh, these are like mid, mid, not high profile, but like mid profile cases where it has little ridges that go up. The construction of these cases are pretty interesting because instead of having internal screws, they have these little flanges that stick out on the outside. And these flanges are what you can use to keep the cases together. Which I think is, to be honest, really interesting. And probably aesthetically not the best for some others. But, eh. You know, there's options for attending stands. So, yeah, these are these are, these are are now available. I think a lot of people are going to like this. Um, for the U.S. proxy, they're on Key High. The group is live until June 24th, which... Uh, it's got a month, right? It's got a month. For aluminum case, you're looking at like $195. It's tending. CNC polycarbonate, $200. Aluminum without tending, $195. CNC polycarbonate without tending, $200. MOQ of $50 each. You can also get aluminum with a custom color for $320, uh, which I think is really cool. They have that option where you're like, yeah, get a custom color. We don't care. Um, we're going to charge you more, but you can go for it, which is really nice of their factory. I... I kind of want to get one, but like, uh, I wouldn't use this though. I'm going to be real with you. I wouldn't use it. So I'm not. But I think a lot of people are really into the split ortho ergo game. And I think this is one of the best options you can get, right? Like it doesn't look nice, as nice as like the Unigo 66, but it's pretty close. I think for a lot of people, that's what counts. Okay, last but not least are two little bits of information, which is, one, KeyCon is going to be live, happening, a thing, this Saturday. I'll be there recording video and working on a video for you all about the meetup. That should be fun, fun in the sun, assuming it's going to be sunny. So if you're going to be at KeyCon, say hi, because I'll be there. Um, so that's going to be... That's gonna be that's 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 gonna be a big fun. Of course, that means that next week's episode will probably get delayed because I'll be out of town doing keycon stuff, like eating food, like having a hot dog or a cheesecake. Because I guess that's all New York is known for. That, that's what my sources tell me. That's what my sources tell me. So, hope you guys enjoyed this week in keyboards. Please check out the sponsor for this episode, Zeal PC, who is currently running a 20% off sale for the switches and hey don't forget to use my affiliate link zealpc.net slash man of interests I'm just gonna just gonna spam that in chat a few times boop, boop, boop. yeah And that's going to be this week in keyboards. I'll see you guys in the next episode, whenever they may be. I also have more content coming soon. So hope to hit you guys with some awesome Topra content coming soon. Because I got a lot of requests and a lot of parts for some Topra shindigs that we can all experience together pretty soon. Also, don't forget, I have the cool board every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Pacific. If you're wondering, Huey, where's the VOD for last episode? I don't want to have to go on Twitch, even though I'm already watching on Twitch or on the VOD, um, to go watch the old one. Well, I have some news for you. I've been hard at work editing and just about done editing the last VOD because all the episodes for the cool board are going to be released the day after. The VOD's going to be re released the day after the next, the day before the next one. So last week's this uh, the cool board is going to be released tomorrow, the day before the next episode. So Wednesday's cool board will be released the VOD the following Tuesday. So gotta get that combo points going on for the coolness of the cool board. 
Well, that's it for this week in keyboards. Feel free to leave a comment down below if you're watching on YouTube or if you're on Twitch. Feel free to stick around and ask me some questeronies before I head off for tonight. Everyone for watching, thank you so much. And this is the end of the YouTube portion.